any of you guys have watched my intro video, you know that I have a long history with a lot of different stuff through the years. Um, back in the day, back in the early 90s, I used to do a lot of carpentry. Um, I, I built quite a few decks back in the day, so I had some carpentry skills. I, I don't use them a whole lot lately. Uh, this is a little privacy fence that I set up because uh, I, I don't have a HOA, but I do have the county person who comes by and if you have garbage or stuff on your this little pad I built some years ago. Um, but if you have stuff showing, uh, they ding you and they give you a couple warnings and you can get a little fine or whatever. And I got tired of that, so I decided that I would have a privacy fence put up. That way I could put stuff back there, uh, which is usually temporary anyway, but they don't care. Uh, that I could put stuff back there and it's out of sight, out of mind. They won't ding me if they can't see it. Uh, so I kind of built this um, kind of quickly, actually. It only took me probably about an hour to make this happen, and it's pretty basic. Um, it, it's not permanently attached anywhere. It's very solid right now because I have these 2x4s uh, that I stuck in there to kind of give it support. And then I have this little rebar that was up here for another purpose kind of pushing against it so I'm, I may permanently attach it at some point but it was just a little experiment to see if I was high enough these are three foot high I have six foot dog ears that um, I actually cut in half because I don't need a six foot tall fence um, so I cut them in half and then I dog eared all the ones that weren't on the bottom end and um, it turned out pretty good um, I'm using I'm using uh, a carpenter's pencil for the spacing, which is uh, exactly a one quarter inch. And that's where I get my spacing from. And then I just use some roofing nails to go in there. Um, you could use screws. Screws work also. Um, just a little more time consuming. I kind of threw this together quickly. But what I used was a couple of pressure treated 2x4s. On the inside, you can see those clearly. And I cut those down. I think this is a six foot span. Um, and this other span is about eight foot long, so I'm going to keep these intact probably. Although I'll still need a way around it in the back, I might cut these off by two feet. And then uh, these are six foot dog eared pressure treated. Or I cut these, these are about six foot. So I found my middle mark, um, marked each and every one of them, and then I took my chop, chop saw and I cut them in half. And then I replicated the dog ear on the one that I cut and came up with that. So I'm going to do the same thing to go this direction so that they can't see around. And uh, it, like I said, by the time I have everything set up, it'll take me uh, less than an hour. Oh, and by the way, minus any type of screws or nails that you use, uh, this cost me, this will get me an 8-foot span. I have enough to cover 8-foot, so I probably won't use them all. Um, but this cost me a total of about $18, I think it was. For me to buy one of these panels at Home Depot that is prefab, uh, cost I think they're about forty, about forty fifty dollars something like that. So you're going to save more than half if you do it yourself. All right, so I've already set up my chop saw, my compressor, my hose. I have where it go? I thought I brought in my nailer, but anyway, oh there it is, and my roof and nailer. Again, if you want to use screws, you can. Um, I don't think my roofing nails will ever pop out. There's three of them at bottom and top. So what I've done here, all I've done so far, is this is my dog ear part. And this is just over six foot long. So I'm just over, just barely here where that mark is, three foot, three foot mark. So these dog ears are now three foot. Those are not dog ears yet, but I'm going to make them be that way pretty soon. Those are three foot. And I've got a couple more that I'm going to cut. I've got a couple more that I'm not going to cut because I don't think I'll need all seven of these. I've cut down my two by four. I think I've taken off about two feet off of the eight foot sections that I have. And uh, where are they at? Oh. So these are my six foot sections and I'm putting them on the garage floor because it's more flat than the driveway. driveway. Um, what I'll do is my first, in order to get it even, these two 2x4s two even, my first um, piece will go along here and I'll nail the bottom in and then I'll nail the top with one nail 
just in case I made a mistake. And I'll make it the same size up from the ground that I did over there, and the same size up from the top that I did over there, so that they'll match up. And that's all I've done so far. So what I do at this point to make the dog ear, turn that around, I find out where my 45 mark would be in relationship to the top of the dog ear. If I were to cut these myself, this is about where I'm at. And because that's where I'm at, that's where I need, that's where I need to be. So I could either do a little rig set up on here, but it's just a lot easier to put a pencil mark there so that I know that when my next piece goes up, that's where it should be. And there you go. Just like it was factory done and it'll be the same size as all these other ones. That easy. Now I have all of them the same exact cut and I can start laying them out the way I want them. That's why it's always difficult to film. I'm doing one hand filming. So what I've done here is I measured, I went around back in the fence and I measured from the bottom of my board to the bottom of the two by four. That part's an inch and a quarter and that part is an inch and three quarters. Not from the dog gear, but from the top, it's an inch and three quarters. So I know that this measurement will match up exactly. Both of these two by four are flush with the board and I'm ready to start nailing. But I'm only gonna do one nail start with. That way it keeps it in place and then I can run everything along in that same direction all the way down with all of my boards. One nail. Once I'm sure that every one of these is attached where I want it to with the one nail then I come back in with two more so top and bottom as I said already gets three nails in it and so it's just a matter of running the boards in here where I want them. A carpenter's pencil is one quarter of an inch wide. So what I simply do is I bring these boards up together so they match up top and bottom. Then I just open up the gap and then close it on the pencil. Right there, that's exactly where I want it. Then, because I'm already flush down here, I can take the pencil out and move it to the top. Put it in there nice and tight with no room left over. Put my one nail in and I just continue that process all the way down.
And that's it. That's the end of the process. I didn't time it exactly. I'm going to say by the time I had all my tools set up and ready to go to the time that I did all my cuts um, and made it happen, as I said, it was probably about an hour total time to do the build. Maybe 20 minutes, 30 at best. And when I got down to here, I have about, I think the overhang on here is probably about an inch. So I could opt to go ahead and cut off that inch if I want to. But in this case, um, that's going to be on the back end where I'm going to enter. So I don't really care about the overhang, but you could. This end is flush, so that will go flush up against my other 2x4s. And then I will tie it in. Um, so yeah, a little panel, as I said. Material-wise, I'm going to say I'd have to look up my receipt. I think it was about $18 for uh, this little section of fence. So you can see it's relatively inexpensive if you do it yourself. And um, it's very practical for my purposes. And there is a the finished product. So as you can see, I have a two-foot uh, section in the back that I can go around. But from the street area, you can't see over here. And so... That's what it was about. I've got um, 30, I think 32 or 34 dollars invested. And that would be, as I said before, the price of one panel at Home Depot. So obviously cheaper to do it yourself. I'm going to tie those together with either some corner brackets or I'll probably drill out a pilot hole and do a toenail um, drill, or sorry, a toenail screw, like a two inch toenail into the top and the bottom stud as it were so um, that way I could take it apart at a later date if I want to this is not permanent but you could definitely make it permanent and that's it that's all I have to uh, show you about how how to build a fence this is a mini version of this so if you wanted to build a whole fence I mean there's a lot of other things involved in it as far as four by fours and putting them in the ground and anchoring them with cement and all of that but as far as the panels go you know you could theoretically get somebody else to anchor your post and pour the cement and all that stuff if you don't want to dig the holes um, at a certain length but you could make all your panels yourself that's going to save you twice because Home Depot's uh, prefab panels are going to cost you a lot more guaranteed plus the fence guy is not going to be upcharging you for all this material so you're going to save for sure and just make it a larger version of what uh, whatever you, you want you don't even have to use quarter you know if you want to you can get them a little bit closer uh, the gaps uh, you can get them closer but you still need a little expansion um, gap in there I hope you enjoyed that video if you did then subscribe hit that button and subscribe I make nothing off of YouTube so please be a patreon member I'm going to post a link down below to my Patreon account, and you can donate a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars a month. Just pledge that that on a monthly basis. That will help me produce more videos and and content so that you can watch and learn from my channel. And donate at least fifty dollars if you're going to call. If you're going to call for advice, donate to my PayPal, please. Donate first, and then feel free to call me or email me uh, for advice. Otherwise, business calls only, please.